everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Keisha and today I'm back with a new Q&A video. But this time, it's more special because I have my best friends here with me, <laughs> Carl and Emily. And we're going to be talking about international students in Oxford. So first of all, thank you for all of my subscribers and friends from Indonesia and other countries that have already put their um, questions and also suggestions and everything. And we're going to be answering those today. Yeah! Yay! <laughs> okay. First of all, we're gonna introduce ourselves first. Uh, my name is Kezia. I'm a second year engineer in Exeter College, Oxford. And I am from Indonesia. I'm Indonesian. I took A levels coming here. And the next one. Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm doing English as well. I'm a second year at Exeter too. And I'm from Denmark. I was born and raised there, and I did IB. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Coral. I'm from Korea. Um, again, studying English at Exeter, and I applied with APs and SATs. So, let's get right into it. Okay, first questions. This is quite interesting, actually. I have a question. Do we need to use British accent while studying there? If I can only do American accent, will they understand me? Hum. What do you think? <laughs> I, I think, of course, of course, everyone will understand you regardless yeah. of your accent. And we all have different accents. Yeah, and none, of, none of us have British accents. <laughs> yeah. So. As you can see. Yeah, yeah. so don't yeah. worry about that at all. It's, it's like the last thing you should worry about. Everyone will understand you no matter what. That is true. I think, yeah, I think as, as long as you're clear enough, and yeah, daily conversations will be fine. And even during the tutorial classes as well. I feel like during my interview, I was really scared that they wouldn't be able to understand me, but they actually understand me pretty well, so just good. Next one, we have a question from Krish. Uh, you're such a good student. This video seems kind of depressing, not gonna <laughs> lie. The vibes it sets up. Well, I can think this question is like, how stressful is it in Oxford and is it depressing? I gotta say it can be stressful during the term because we only have um, two months per term. So for in that eight weeks, I have to actually learn so many topics and all just like clamp together. It feels very intense. What do you think about it? <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, like it, the work is intense, but um, like if you're in Oxford, like you're just living with like tons of other people who are going through the same things and who can relate to that. So um, there are quite good support systems. Um, and I think, you know, um, everyone's in it together, so yeah. um, we can have like really nice de-stressing um, sessions, like, you know, um, sometimes we have movie nights, like just, or just going to the pub together. Um, going on a walk, and yeah. going to the park, or shopping trips. <laughs> shopping trips! <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think, I think it is important to like, for people to know that it is a hard experience here, but for me, I still wouldn't change anything. Like. It, it is hard, but you also get good rewards as well. So I think, yeah, like it's it's a bit problematic to romanticize Oxford too much because it's not all just like rainbows and butterflies. But knowing that it's still tough, I think everyone would agree that they, there's like we're still here for a reason. Yeah. Because um, you can you can also like decide to drop out if it's not for you. Wow, <laughs> that's a bit hard. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's true though. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Um, Oxford is not for everyone. Yeah. So next question. You can just like take this. Wait, question. Well, we is too. Yeah, I mean. Okay, can. I'll just read the whole thing. I love your productivity. <laughs> can I request a video how to make friends and socialize with other people because personality in US. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess like the um, comment is basically um, asking how is socializing in Oxford as an international student during the pandemic. I think. I think in Oxford you're very lucky because everyone gets into a college, so yeah. you're not just thrown into like this huge uni with like oh, thousands of people. True. There's like, for example, in Exeter, I think we have around like hundred undergrad like freshers, which means like people who just get in like the same year as you. So there's like maybe hundred people in our year, so that's automatically less people to like hang out with. And then you are also in like, for example, um, like a staircase or like a corridor. Yeah. So you have like people close to you physically so it's kind of easier like maybe you'll see them when you go to eat dinner in the hall together or maybe you'll just see them in like in around college so I think it's very I think it is easy to socialize in Oxford and then you can get out of it how much you put into it so you can maybe make friends with people outside of college or people outside of your course or maybe go to societies or sports 
but so it's kind of like you make like you put into it and then that's what you get out of it i think mm -hmm. that is true and i think like societies here work really well with like anyone who wants to meet new friends because um like you don't have to be like a member or like um, part of the society committee to like actually go to their events like you could just randomly show up in like the middle of term like in your second year mm -hmm. to like an event that you might be interested in and like that's completely fine and like so many people do it like societies are almost like just run based on that um that yeah so i think there are like really good opportunities to meet new people as well <laughs> can i take a yogurt yeah yeah uh, so the next question is what is the minimum score for ielts so ielts is the english language exam that some or actually most international students need to take um, when applying to Oxford. And I think the minimum score is, can you read it? Yeah, um, so I think for a lot of the courses, it's um, the minimum, like overall score is 7.5 with like minimum 7.0 per component, which is like each section of the exam. But like for some like really STEM heavy um, courses like maths and like stats, um, overall minimum is seven with like 6.5 minimum per, per component. So it really depends on um, the course. Yeah, and there are some alternative exams as well. Um, so it's like best that um, just go on the Oxford Uni website. They have like a whole table for this. So um, yeah. Yeah. the website will be here somewhere. Is how much does your dorm course? <laughs> course, <laughs> girl! <laughs> that has just a go! I can't English anymore. Anyways, how much does your dorm cost you? Um, I think for this dorm, this is such a beautiful dorm, right? It's like twenty-five pounds per night. So if you calculate it um, for the whole term, which is two months, it's gonna be around one thousand and five hundred pounds. So yeah. <laughs> but so, it, it depends on the college, though. Yeah, yeah it depends yeah. on the college, and um, even inside the college, they can vary a lot. The prices it's different, but then. Um, Usually the dorms will include like scouts, water, electricity, gas, whatever. So you just need to pay around the beginning of the term and that will be everything for your dorm for your accommodation. And scouts are people that like clean our rooms for us and yes. like help clear our trash and stuff. So uh, this question is asking about um, do you live alone in your dorm and do you have you don't have a roommate and do you have a kitchen in your dorm? So um, we all live alone in the room usually. There are some double sets, but um, it's mostly just one person per room, mm -hmm. which is great. You have your own personal bubble. And uh, do you have a kitchen in your dorm? It's, it depends. It depends on the dorm. Um, our dorm has like a kitchen in every floor. So we have three floors and there's like one big kitchen for everyone to share. So this person asks, are the assignments submitted in physical form? Like lab reports, do they need to be handwritten? So I guess it depends on the subject. This person is asking specifically about lab reports. I can't answer that because he's eating yogurt. <laughs> so I'll answer in terms of English. It depends on the tutor, but for all of my tutors, um, or like professors, for all of my assignments, I've always handed them in like online. So like via email, um, and then we also usually get them back online and some professors give them back in person with like hand scribbles. Um, but yeah, so all of, all of mine are online. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for engineering, it was mostly handwritten. So uh, we need to submit all of our handwritten um, answers from the tutorial sheets to the professors. Uh, but then during COVID, it all changed and we just submitted um, via email. And I think they will continue on doing that. They won't be accepting handwritten ones anymore. Okay, and now from AK Sings. <laughs> What's the total cost of doing an engineering degree in Oxford? Um, for me, I paid 35,000 pounds per year and um, it's quite expensive and I think it's different from STEM and English or humanities in general. But you have Jardine. Yeah, but <laughs> I have Jardine scholarship so um, the scholarship that I have now will literally pay for all the school fee and also give me pocket money every year. And yeah, that's why even though it's expensive, I can still come here. How about you? 
Um, so, I think for English um, international student fees, um, it's like around £26,000 per year. Um, yeah, and like obviously on top of that, there's like accommodation and food and everything. Um, and I think to get the student visa for here, um, like I had to kind of prove that like I had a certain amount of money like um, to afford um, coming here. Yeah, so when I applied to Oxford, then the UK was still a part of the EU. So that meant that my fees were the same as someone who was living in the UK, even though I was from Denmark, because I was part of the EU. So I pay £9,250 a year, and that's just for tuition, so just for the teaching. And then I also have accommodation and food and like other things on top. And when I first applied, or when I, when I got in, they kind of had me like show documentation that I was able to pay for my full degree. So I had to show that I could pay around eighty thousand pounds in total. So that would be all of the like all the living costs and the tuition together for three years, which is how long my English degree is. Oh, this is a nice question. Do you enjoy being in the UK? I love the video. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy being in the UK? Yeah, I like being in the UK. I think Oxford is a really nice city to live in. Because I remember first when I saw London, I was like, oh, that's a bit <laughs> too, too much. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Oxford is a really nice like, balance between... You have a lot of things you can do, like you can go shopping, and there's a cinema, and there's a good like party scene, but there's also really small cute cafes and like lots of good nature and like old buildings. So I think it's a, it's a good mix, but of course I miss my like, home country as well. So, it, But it's nice to have two homes. And I think I can study better here for some yeah, reason. Yeah, same. Yeah, because I just integrate like Oxford or the UK as like a place for me to study, like a mm. uni. So, do you like being here? I think you like being in Oxford a lot. Yeah, um, like one thing I really like about Oxford is like you can basically walk to anywhere in the city. Um, I think usually from our college to like most faculties. Mm, you would probably expect like maximum twen a 20 minute walk max mm. um, so it's like really student friendly um, lots of libraries all around that you could study in yeah um, pretty libraries yeah. Yeah. yeah so we we all enjoy being here mm -hmm.